after the play will go down to visit with Jack Aroot and try to find out if he knows a little bit more as to why he has uh, not been in the ball game or carrying the football so far. This running play is just going to go for nothing. Jack, let's check with you and uh, tell us what you got. Well, there. Ron, sometimes you have to just read the tea leaves. I queried the uh, the situation and asked if there was a problem with Goodson, and the representatives told me that, well, he wasn't feeling well at the beginning of the, of the, the week. And I said, well, is it a disciplinary? Is it a health issue? They shrugged their shoulders and said, just don't know. But uh, he didn't feel well in the beginning of the week, but he looks okay to me down here on the sidelines. He's, been, he's had some smiles on the sideline. Yeah. Anyway, he's such a good player, and it's just a little bit surprising to see the youngsters playing in front of him. Second down and 10, and this uh, handoff goes right inside. And AM just simply from tackle to tackle has not allowed anything running so far. And I go back to Mike Goodson. When you see a player on the sideline who's not holding his helmet, he's not going to play. At least not now. I mean, you you go over there and you hold your helmet because you never know if there's going to be a turnover. You may have to run out for a quick change. And Mike Goodson without a helmet makes me feel like now Dennis Franchoni always tight lipped about both injuries and suspension. So uh, maybe he is ill. Maybe he uh, got in some trouble. Uh, but we just don't know. But without without seeing him with his helmet in hand, I doubt Mike Goodson's going to play for a little while. Third down Oklahoma needs to take it out to their own 49 yard line Sooners lead it seven to nothing. They set a screen back into the short side of the field and a missed tackle in the open field and that'll be a first down OU and it was Pew trying to put a stop on Chris Brown but it's a gain of 10 yards. Excellent work downfield by Malcolm Kelly and you start to see why Chris Brown watch Kelly up top. He gets inside on the safety who had walked up and watch him finish this block. Excellent job not a holding really nice work but you start to see why Chris Brown has started to get more and more plays his way. He's just he continually moving forward. Bradford has connected on his last four passes. This is DeMarco Murray and he is hit from behind as he goes forward and he'll have four yards. Let's go down and check in with Jack again. Well I discovered a new nickname for Sam Bradford and it was given by his head coach uh, Bob Stoops. He calls him the Big Easy. Now it's not because Sam is a scratch golfer which he is but because of the similarity in the personality of Ernie Els. But when the media heard about it and they missed what the reference was by calling him the Big Easy. Well then Bob had to backtrack a little bit and say because nothing seems to phase him. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. I think it's probably they played golf in the offseason. What do you think. <laughs> yeah, guys? I think so. <laughs> That's uh, Gresham the tight end in motion. But they got single coverage at the top of your screen and the ball is overthrown and here comes a flag. Carpenter was the man with the cover on Malcolm Kelly. And good coverage at that. He was stride for stride. Carpenter's really matured. Well, the Aggie coaches are very upset, though, and it looks as though. Pass interference. Number 13 of the defense. 15 yard penalty. First down. Well, both guys had their arms up. That That's. That's not defensive pass interference. I, if I were an Aggie coach, I would be upset too. I think Carpenter played that ball very well. If anything, Kelly was using his inside arm to keep him off. I, well, it's a tough penalty to take if you're an Aggie. And, and Dennis Franchione tried to look at the big board to see if there would be a replay to see one way or the other. They never showed it, guys. You know. Three tight ends, the formation for Oklahoma. And Gary Darnell admitted that this gives them a lot of trouble because of all the varieties that Oklahoma can run off of it because two of the guys particularly Finley catches the ball well along with Gresham but also using them in blocking. Yeah but Brody Eldridge who is the best blocker can actually line up as a fullback so uh, Gary Darnell said it's a guessing game when you're playing Oklahoma. Usually if you see three tight ends trot out yeah. you think they're going to have a power formation let's get our big folks in there all our linebackers but with Gresham being able to walk away and Finley being able to run down the field uh, it's almost like they're a spread offense with those guys in Alan Patrick is the man at the eye but they're going to throw it and out in the flat there is Eldridge the tight end and that is exactly what we were talking about that Darnell said gives them so many problems well and they ran Finley down the field vertical which cleared out that side for Eldridge so Mark. very difficult to defend when you have guys that are that big and can run there was Finley 
flashing by, clearing it out. Nice catch by Eldridge. Yeah, it was. Almost dropped it. Mark Dodge on the tackle. He has a special teams tackle and at least a couple on defense. He's got a good defensive game going tonight as a short running play, maybe for a couple. That's Alan Patrick again, and again it's Dodge who's there to make the stop. And that is the end of the opening quarter. Our presentation of Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. You're watching ESPN on ABC.